Because it's the holiday season, I thought it might be fun to talk about one of my favorite comedies that has been released over the past couple years, and it's called the On Cinema and More in the Morning Christmas Special. It's actually from season 13 of On Cinema at the Cinema, but it's a bit of a standalone episode, so I thought it might be fun to talk about why it's a great example of creativity and trying new ideas in the world of comedy. Right as the episode begins, we see a few elements as to how this whole thing works. You see the cheesy conservative talk show network logos, the horrendous Christmas theme background, and as he's introducing his co-host, it gives a bit of a false sense of wholesomeness and comfort. After the wholesome introduction, everything begins to unravel as Tim introduces Grainwater, which is his cure for death and gives you immortality you know the greatest gift you can give someone or yourself this season is the gift of immortality what is standing in the way of each and every one of us achieving immortality the answer is simple death for centuries death was considered impossible to defeat all that changes today I'm holding in my hands the most important discovery in human history. It's called grain water, and it's the most powerful weapon to stop death in its tracks. So join me and the On Cinema and More in the Morning family as we unwrap the greatest Christmas present mankind has ever received, the end of death and the beginning of forever life. We're going to be talking about the history and science of death with people who have literally been knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. I'm so excited to share with you what they have to say. I'm pretty sure that grain water is just sewage and lithium, but his claims about it get crazier as the episode goes on. Okay, this, this is going to make you probably speak English. It does not, it does not smell good. If you want to re stop the aging process immediately, um, and kind of lock yourself in and even become younger. Mm -hmm. I don't know how old you are, but I put you at, you know, I think drinking that for six to nine, six to, you know, a year most, every day, a couple of sips, I get you down to 18 years old in no time. So. You don't look 18. No, no, no. Well, that, this is part of the process. Believe it or not, this is supposed to be a movie review show. And one of my favorite jokes throughout this video is that Greg tries to bring up his greatest Christmas movie list many times and Tim will do anything he can to change the subject or not talk about movies. And Greg Turkington from the VFA is here. Hey guys, we're going to be holding uh, on Christmas Day an online Christmas film festival. So we're gonna do 12 films in 24 hours. We'll have all those titles for you that you can check out on Twitter. We're also gonna be counting down the 10 greatest Christmas movies of all time later on today's show. Well, we we're very excited. You know, mm -hmm. I, I just wanna first of all apologize to you guys for my, uh, my health. Uh, you know, look, I knew going into this that it was going to it was going to be a fight to for a, a sort of a fight against my own body uh and it, it, my body uh is working like hell to stop what i'm doing to it but i'm no more about my body than my body knows about my body you know what i mean so tim doesn't ever really act appropriately in any social situation and this is exemplified by the fact that he brings up his co-host's husband's death for apparently really no reason, and it's uncalled for, very awkward and uncomfortable. We can provide eternal life for whoever wants it, and some people don't want it. Some people want to get the hell off this planet as quick as possible, right? I don't know what the story was with your husband. I don't know what his deal was. I know it was an accident or whatever it was, a murder, but... You know, a lot of these choices that happen, a lot of these things that happen to people aren't choices. They are uh, almost fate. And, and in other words, like, maybe he wouldn't have worked out, maybe you, you two wouldn't have worked out in the end anyway. I don't know. You now can't I'm say that. You can't. I apologize and I retract that. Uh, 
I think Tim puts these moments into his comedy because he wants a full spectrum of emotion. And as you're watching the episode, it's just a whirlwind of feelings that add up throughout the whole thing. I think that's why he chooses to add these things that a lot of people might think are slightly unnecessary. Greg eventually gets to show his list of the greatest Christmas movies. I just thought that was a funny little tidbit. The main investor for the High Network decides to sing a song. I'm pretty sure they just put the scene in here to torture us. It kind of hurts real good. We have a special musical guest, Mr. G. Amato, with the Christmas classic, Away in a Manger. Two of Tim's bandmates from the band Dakar came onto the show and they were supposed to talk about their car accident they were in, but things get a little weird and they never really end up communicating properly. This is a big problem we have because we gotta train, we gotta fix the odor on this so people actually drink it. You have to get over that fear. Ma, devi devi farti passare la paura. Put that over there. All right, well, listen. Um, Can you take it away? Actually, just get it away from us. Praticamente, si vuole farti capire che, insomma, non devi aver paura di morire perché lui ha fatto una roba nuova, un liquido. All right, folks, coming up, you will see with your own eyes how I have radically altered my genetic code on a molecular level to provide a shield against death itself. Finally, Tim unveils that he is going to prove he has the key to immortality by putting himself under lethal injection, and he brings on a great character named Dr. Alan Silver. I'd like to welcome to the stage right now Dr. Alan Silver. Doctor, thank you very much for being a part of this. We are set up here for what can only be described as a lethal injection. Now, what is your background with lethal injections and uh, your experience with lethal injections? Lethal injection is the practice of injecting one or more drugs into a person. Uh, Typically, uh, we use a barbiturate, uh, some type of potassium solution, and also a paralytic. These drugs cause the person to uh, become unconscious and then stop breathing and then cause the person to ultimately have a cardiac arrhythmia in that order. How many of these lethal injections have you performed throughout your career? Uh, Several, several. That must be a very uh, heavy burden for you. Dr. Allen's acting is a mix between Good acting, bad, and some sort of uncanny valley that I can't quite explain. He serves the scene very well. He does a nice job at adding a bit of mystery and a bit of creepiness to everything. Uh, have, has anyone in your long history doing this, has anyone ever survived a lethal injection? No. And these drugs are very serious and should not wind up in the hands of amateurs. Now, I cannot stress to you enough 
how important it is to have a medical professional administer this drug and also an extensive grain water treatment program. Well, the good news is I've been uh, on grain water now for several weeks, and my feeling is that no matter what anybody does to me, when, no matter what drug you pump through my body, that the grain water is going to act as a shield and protect me against death itself. Now as these claims are being made on the hospital bed, I think it's funny to remember that none of this ever had to happen, and this is all self-imposed delirium. This is actually supposed to be a movie review show. Well, that, this is part of the process. You know, people that have gone through cancer treatments and things like this, chemotherapy, they, they talk about the crash and the yeah. pain and the suffering and, and how hard it is. And that's what's happening with me right now. My body is, is, dis, is disintegrating. In but this words. is self-inflicted. You don't have to drink no, this. No, I'm not self-inflicted. This is the plan, all right? I'm sticking with the plan. And what's going to happen is you're going to see results very soon. I see it, and, and I don't like what I see. You don't look well. And I'll tell well. you this. I'll tell you this. If this is as good as I think it is, that we are looking at, and I'm going to be talking to Amato about this, is opening the uh, Tim Heidecker Center for Immortality. I'm not going to spoil everything for you, so if you want to see what happens when the countdown reaches zero, I suggest you watch it at highnetwork.tv. Performances like this set new standards for what comedians can do in the future. So I always applaud someone for trying something new. Did you cut the brakes again? Yep. Oh, God damn it, damn it. Why would you do that? That's just what I do! Wild guard, bitches! Watch it! You're serious? You don't know. <laughs> Everybody knows you never go full retard. The worst thing about prison was the was the Dementors. They were flying all over the place and they were scary and then they'd come down and they sucked the soul out of your body and it hoit! Dem Dementors like in Harry Potter? No, not Harry Potter. It was nice to talk about this. I hope that more comedians try things like this in the future. It's interesting to see new ideas being tried out and people being ridiculous. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Have a good one. All right.